to yet another edition of Women's Manifesto. And as you all know, Women's Manifesto is supported by Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. Well, today we are here in the Tema Central constituency. And if you can see by me, we have the, uh, I mean, she's contesting as a parliamentary candidate on the ticket of the NDC, Ebi Bright. Hi. Hello, and uh, <laughs> welcome to Tema Central. Thank you very much for visiting us. And we want to use this opportunity to say hello mm. to all residents of Tema Central, all viewers uh, all across Ghana and beyond. Welcome to Tema Central. Thank you very much. And you know that Women's Manifesto is dedicated particularly to women leaders and parliamentary candidates in all constituencies right here in Ghana. And so today, as I said, we are here in the Tema Central constituency. Let me give you a bit of a history of this constituency. And Tema Central is one of the constituencies represented in the Parliament of Ghana. It is located right here in the greater Accra region of Ghana in the part of uh, the Tema municipality. When it comes to its social status, Tema is known as an industrial hub in Ghana, where the presence of Tema Port, the largest in the country, and the Tema Oil Refinery Tour, as we all know it. Now, the industrial and commercial activities in Tema Central offers a range of job opportunities for residents, including positions in manufacturing, logistics, shipping, and related sectors. Now, let's get to the political history, because that's why we're here, right? Okay, so established in 2012, Tema Central was carved out of the Tema East and Tema West constituencies. Now, since its inception, the constituency has exhibited a strong preference for the MPP. Well, in both presidential and parliamentary elections, the MPP have garnered over 60% of votes every election year. We had to see whether that will change in the 2024 elections. Well, we hear from Ibi Bright. Well, um, with regards to the specific dynamics of elections for the 2024 and historical voting pathings, uh, past voting pathings and party affiliations in the constituency uh, provide insights into potential dynamics of the upcoming elections. Also, incumbency plays a critical role. Uh, political parties and their candidates also play a critical role. Now, what are the key issues that may inform uh, the voting pathing for constituents right here in the Tema Central constituency ahead of the 2024 general elections? We know that economic development will be one of them. Social services, that's the availability of healthcare, education, um, social welfare services as well. Infrastructure is also a key issue right here. Sanitation, sewage, are one of the key issues that uh, will uh, determine really who they would vote for in the, com in the coming elections and youth empowerment as well as employment. So right here, as I said, we have Abby Bright. And let me give you a bit of a history as well with regards to elections. Well, Abby um, contested in 2016. Well, she lost with 31.2% of votes to Kofi Brako, who won by 68.3%. In 2020, she contested again, and she lost to Yves Hansen Norte uh, by 34.96% of votes, and he won by 65.04% of votes. Welcome once again. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Let's start. Let's start with uh, your political history. I mean, we've already talked about it, but why did you enter politics? Well, I, I like to say it's accidental, but... Um you know, when you reflect on the journey, you see that it's divine. It does take us sometimes to align with a life's purpose. So, um, you know, I, I used to think or believe that my voice was meant for the arts alone. You know, music, uh, movies, and all of those expressive arts. Uh, but my life's journey put me increasingly in the line of advocacy. So even as an actress, as anything else that I was doing, I was always looking at, you know, how policy and stuff could affect, you know, the conditions. Mm. And so earlier on in life, I went into consultancy for businesses, communication in, uh, you know, in business, and then into development communication, which is essentially being a bridge between local communities and development partners, right. and then into diplomacy. So, you know, I guess that with my activism in 
uh, incrementalism and my social democratic ideology. It was only a matter of time before I realized that I was called to a duty to put these, you know, to the use of my community. Because I guess more than anything else, I mean, apart from my family and, um, you know, friends, mm. I love Tema Central or I love Tema. But incidentally, my love for family and friends is tied into my love for Tema. Because this is where we're from. This is where we are. This is where we all call home. Even those of us who are in the diaspora, this is where we come back to. And so you don't find anywhere else to serve and to love and to commit to than to Tema. Right, uh, Ebi, you enter the political space in 2016, where you contested uh, the parliamentary elections right here. Probably you entered earlier, but we know you contested in 2016. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now tell us, what has been your experience? Describe for us your experience in the political scene so far. Okay, so let me use this opportunity to draw your minds to the fact that the political space uh, is a lot heavier at the bottom than it is at the top. So yes, I entered uh, active or public uh, political activity in 2016, in the 2016 elections. But behind all of that is a whole network of what we call food soldiers, of which you know I <laughs> have identified as one mm. before then. So these are the branch executives, the women organizers, the, the organizers, the I mean, the whole network of a party structure that, that fosters political um, activity. And this is where I was coming from. So in, uh, 20, uh, in 2015, mm -hmm. after the CPP had approached me to be their parliamentary candidate, it occurred to me that I had a responsibility to actually stand for what I truly represented, which was the NDC. And so that's how the journey began. It's not been easy. Actually, my first um, attempt was easier. It wasn't easier in the sense of winning. It was easier in the sense of the support that I had because I was coming in fresh into the political, active political space. Right. Um, I had a lot of people that I came to meet already in the struggle and they bolstered me, they taught me the ropes, explained to me the electoral processes and all of that. So 2016 was essentially more of an experimental year. But what we realized was that the NDC had a very weak presence in Tema Central and right. um, for historical reasons. Uh, and so I knew that my first port of action was to increase our visibility and our confidence to, to make the party present here. Do you believe so, you've done so? Oh, yeah, yeah, we did that. In 2016, we're very visible. And then suddenly, you know, instead of being mistaken as usual for Tema East or Tema West or Tema What, you know, we, we developed, we cultivated the image of Tema Central. And we worked steadily at, at it. And um, my comrades understood with me that this was not going to be a one-day wonder situation because it was arguably the stronghold of the MPP, their seventh best seat nationwide. Mm. So we took on the challenge again in 2020 by repeating the candidate. And this afforded us the opportunity not only to show our determination and our persistence, but also the continuity, the fact that they had a candidate that was determined that was passionate enough about Tema not to give up because the first out was discouraging. And also it afforded us a lot of experience. It afforded us the network of relationships that we had started to build from 2015 through 2016 mm. and up until 2019, 2020. So, you know, if you abandon those relationships right. and uh, the engagements that you have, then you lose out. So uh, political gains in this case for Tema Central for the NDC in Tema Central have been cumulative. And so the consistency of the candidates, the consistency of our message, the consistency of our drive and our mission has, uh, I think it's worked very well for us. Right, and if you're just joining us, <laughs> great. You know, I, I've been waiting for you to clap for a while now, so it's great you are doing that. <laughs> Hey. Hey. And if you're just joining us, this is Women's Manifesto right here in the Tema Central constituency. This is Tema uh, Community 7, and we're here at Subin Valley. So if you're in the uh, environment or you're in the community, kindly come here, right here in the, under this uh, canopy, and join us uh, on Women's Manifesto. Now, Ibi, yes. let's continue with this. 
Okay. You, for one, you've been in the eye of the storm ever since you entered the political scene. <laughs> yes. And I can believe that that has been a very challenging moment for you, a number mm. of moments that have been challenging for you. Tell us some of the challenges you face as a woman well, and how you overcame them. Well, um, the, the challenges that I've faced have, more, have been more about the fact that I'm standing in an ordinarily marginalized zone for my party than that I'm a woman. As for the challenges of being a woman, for me, I've experienced them across board, not only in politics. So I wouldn't even like to fixate on that. Really, they've been difficult because you're expected to keep up the image of a good daughter, a good uh, mother, wife, um, you know, and still accomplish everything that, you know, everybody else accomplishes. But beyond that, you're doing this not only in a male-dominated space, because a male-dominated space is not necessarily because they, they oppress women directly, mm -hmm. but because they have their own code. You know, I'm not going to be sitting chugging drinks with guys at 11 p.m. I'm going to be home. Right. So I have to make up for all of these inabilities on my part with uh, enough activity during the day. So yes, there are boys clubs and that's where you know the, the deals are struck. That's where um, a certain level of understanding about how society moves. And so it, it requires you to come up with something a lot more than the ordinary. But beyond that also, I'm not going to make any excuses mm. because bigger women, more powerful women have come ahead of me. Yeah. They've conquered spaces. You know, the vice president uh, in the very near future for this country <laughs> is a woman. But not only a woman who's conquered the political space, mm -hmm. she's, she's achieved so much in fields that were dominated by men anyway. So when women like that go ahead and they do all of this, what excuses do you have? However, the issue with Tema Central has been that it's not being a stronghold of my party. So right. you have to dig deep to conquer all the marginalization, the security challenges. Because, you know, there was a time in Tema Central, right around when I came up as the parliamentary candidate, where my people will be afraid to wear their beautiful t-shirts and walk on the streets. And so even for men, this wasn't something they were ready to take on. So as a woman, it's doubly difficult, you know, because I don't have the muzzles and nobody thinks that I'm going to put up a fiscal fight if you cross me. You know what I mean? But kudos to my women. They've been my backbone. We stuck it out. Yeah, we, we, we're, we're stronger, arguably, than the men. Well, with all due respect. Well, that brings me to <laughs> my next question because it has to do with the woman factor. Yeah. We know that this is an, a stronghold of the N, uh, MPP. MPP yeah. And looking at the voting pathing and the parliamentary candidates that have been presented by the MPP, they've been men throughout, yes, yes. from Gof Kofi Brako to uh, Yves, and now we have Charles forcing, yeah. contesting you. Do you really think that the woman factor makes a difference? Do you think that the voting pathing uh, is determined by what? Uh, by gender in any way in this constituency? Well, initially it did make a difference when they hadn't had the chance to experience me as a person and as a candidate. Because this is a constituency where I don't think that any man could have stuck it through what I stuck through to get to this point. So, so we've, had, we've had the opportunity of time mm. and the opportunity to prove a character that is arguably a par or beyond that that men have displayed in this constituency. Because I've stood against these people who have the con hey, men, who have the constituency <laughs> as their stronghold. Yeah. So they have a strong, um, you know, uh, you have party. An upper hand, yeah, yeah, they do have an upper mm. hand. They've never had to work for it. Mm. But here it is, I've had to work for it. And then beyond working for it, I've gone through a lot, like you know, um, fiscal attacks, um, arson, yeah. you know, so many things that it doesn't, you know, pay us any good to recount. Mm. But the point is that through all of this, now you have a woman candidate that is standing today with the pedigree of having stood the test of time. You know, I stand here very proudly. I'm wearing my political scars very proudly because, you know, we've gone through it. But what this has done is it's given me a lot of experience and it's proven my character, my resilience. And right. the fact that I'm passionate about Tema Central enough not to give up along the way just because it's tough. You know, 
There are many people who thought that I wouldn't do this if I knew how difficult it would be. Maybe to a certain extent. But then you've proven also to those people that it didn't matter how difficult it was going to be. And that I didn't go into this blindly. I only mm. went in with passion and commitment. And that's why we're here today. Choboy! 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 After a while, we'll give you the chance to ask questions. Ebi Bright is here to answer every question you have. Whether you are from the MPP, the NDC, any other party, you'll be given the chance to ask any question in any language you want to. Choboy! <laughs> okay. Now, now, let's stay on the political scene because yeah. basically that's why we're here. Welcome. And as I've said earlier, we all know that it's a stronghold of the MPP here. It was looking at a stronghold of it the was, MPP. It was, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we're here to see. But looking at the votes in pathing, the NDC has lingered around... The NDC has lingered around around 30 to 35%, sometimes 36% of votes, both presidential and parliamentary elections. Now... Do you believe that this time around, you have won the hearts of the grassroots? Yeah. So we haven't only won their hearts, we've won their minds. And this is very interesting. What I did with the NDC was to, to agree with them to take up the challenge. First of all, I believe that up until now, we hadn't fought enough for the people of Tema Central. We had accepted that this was a stronghold of the MPP. We weren't offering them the alternative of a strong NDC that had the capacity to push ahead their aspirations. So that was number one for me. And that's why it was important that we stayed in the game and kept on trying. Uh, number two, like I said, time has afforded us the opportunity to take our message time and time again and consistently to the people of Tema Central. It's afforded us the opportunity to intervene in however little a capacity on the things that mattered to us. They might not have been the things that made all the news, but they were things that actually made a difference on the ground. So yes, what we've succeeded in doing in Tema Central today is a constituency that is not only now blindly partisan, but is now looking at the issues that actually matter to us. So today, you don't walk into Tema Central and your mic picks up comments like, oh, yeah, the Aponchi Bakra, yeah, Betua Manu. Today, you, you ask someone and what the feed that you get says, these are issues, these are issues, these are issues. So we forced a situation in Tema Central when we're looking at the value of us as a community and thinking who is presenting the best options and the best capacity to deliver. I think that it's also important for us to be mindful of the fact that this is the pulse of this nation's economy. So if this is Tema Central today, then it's an indictment on what we say, how well we say the nation's economy is doing. Also, the promise of the 24-hour economy for Ghanaians by His Excellency John Mahama and his cabinet is something that is especially important for people of Tema Central. Before anywhere else in this nation, it is important to us because it's about industrialization. This is about work. This is about import substitution. This is about thriving industries. And if you know anything about Tema, especially Tema Central, all of us here were actually migrants. Where, um, uh, you know, we were people who came here with employment, assured employment, and a social infrastructure that could sustain you know, a work-life leisure balance and the well-being of our families and children. Today, all of this has been abandoned over the course of how many years? And so a national policy that is minded to put Tema and Tema Central especially back on the map as the salvation of this nation might not concern anybody else immediately, but for us, this is tomorrow already for us. So I think that this message is what has minded Tema Central to the fact that it's not even only about an MP at this point, but His Excellency John Mahama holds a promise of salvation for us that we cannot afford to pass up. Hey. Abby, you did this in 2016. Yeah. You probably sold your message out. Yeah. You tried again in 2020. Yeah. And again, you sold your message. Yes. 
It's 2024. Yes. How confident are you? I'm very confident because the message in 2020 was a build up on the message of 2016. The message in 2024 is the ogapatapata of them all. You see, you can't, you can't, you can't underestimate the value of experience. You know, Tema Central saying no didn't mean no. It just meant not yet. Today, they are, conf they are confident that there's nobody arguably in the political space who has a grasp on Tema Central more than me. There's nobody that has been to every nook and cranny of this constituency and has engaged every issue as much as me. There's nobody that has been part of the experience of everything that we've gone through since 2015 actively as a politician, as a social leader, than me. Over time, people have had the chance to say, oh, is this not Sistei? Because maybe they haven't met you before, but they meet you and say, ah, Sistei, and ya mumuho na na yeto emu, any bayre, any benku, ewo industrial area. Then the person says, na miye juma wa Nestle. This person says, na miye juma wa PZ, na wo ni wo mami, muho na na mito iduyani. That is my street cred where the heavy industrial area is concerned. The light industrial area is where my office was for over 10 years as a young woman all this time. And that's where I identify. You see, I grew up in community seven. My mother still lives there. My son still lives there. I say lives there because essentially I pick him up at almost 10 uh, p.m. every evening. I live at community 10. If you know Tema residences, it's all about two sides of the hospital road. And I live on both sides of the hospital road. So essentially, Tema is the heavy industrial area. It's the light industrial area. And it's these residences. And so my street cred is unparalleled. Uh, I had the unfortunate experience of listening to my opponents say, to all of us in Tema Central and to all of you in, in the rest of Ghana and the whole world listening, that he had resolved the sewage issue. But that is because he lives in Comte 6. I live in 10. 6 and 10 is one electoral area. Mm. Where we live, we don't have sewage issues. Yeah. And so this guy is in his gilded cage. He has no idea what's going on in Tema Central. But you know what? Make a contribution to unclog our choked gutters in Tema, Community 7. Because I also live there. So I know what it is to see sewage you know, crawling right in front of your house. But you see, I've also been to Community 4, where the sewage is inside people's rooms. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you're out of touch with what happens in the constituency, it is an insult to suggest that you're qualified. So my journey from 2015, look, I've lived here all my life. This is where I grew up. So I can say that I know this constituency. But the experience of running for office mm. gives you the opportunity to engage in issues that ordinarily you wouldn't have the opportunity to engage in. So I get invited into issues that I would be oblivious of because of my political leadership. You understand? So today, that is what the experience of losing in 2016, losing in 2020 has given me. The capacity to be able to represent the full picture of Tema Central. I don't take it for granted. You, you don't take it for granted. Um, and and with, neither, neither to my constituents. They right. know the experience I've gained through the process. Right. We're going to go into issues of the sewage and other challenges yeah. that are here. And probably you might have to rate your, um, the outgoing... Uh, uh, MPs yeah. performance in this constituency but first let me ask you this question it might hit you a bit hard but in case the constituents of Tema Central this year decide again not to give you the nod how long will you keep trying well up until this point up on this until this point like I said to you we didn't imagine it was going to be a one day event and mm. so we've showed commitment I think that it's highly unlikely that the people of Tema Central will reject the clear vision that is in front of them at this moment. And considering their experiences, I don't think that they're sleeping that much. We are desperate for a change. It's beyond our emotions. I tell you, if you left it to them, 
people generally, I mean, we're comfortable where we are. Mm. But this hasn't worked. And it's clear. So it's very unlikely that I will not be the next MP for Tema Central. But you see, the only thing it will do for me is to give me more sleepless nights. Because I have worked through the solutions and I have the capacity to deliver. And so every time you watch, and until now we haven't had anyone as clueless as the current MP. In fact, I get palpitations imagining that he's even in the space in the first place. Because what each um, electoral election year has done for us in Tema Central was increase the level of the discourse. This time is so low because you don't get the chance to engage issues on an ideological level to improve your thinking of, of issues, you know? So this is what I'm worried about. But like you say, on the off chance that we don't make it, my commitment to Tema and Tema Central still stands. I'm not mm. gonna move out of this constituency. So what do I do? I'll try in my small way to continue to make a difference. But let us be mindful of many things. Number one, if we have a president in His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, and we don't have a member of parliament who is under his vision, aligned to that vision, then we have very little to offer Tema Central. Because the transformation that we need in Tema Central today is not in the hands of a single MP or in a, an MP's capacity to deliver. What we're looking at is the need for a total redevelopment. This is Ghana's industrial hub. Does it befit an industrial hub? It's a clear distinction between uh, Yepe Kwain, Yepe Street Lights, mm. Yepe, you know, all those little things. What we need is a social infrastructure overhaul that turns this place into the deliverance for Ghana as a whole. You look at Tor. Tor is not about a single MP. It is about the need for <laughs> a salvation for us nationally. But however, we're looking for somebody who can make these arguments, articulate the issues, not just go to parliament and forget that Tema Central is supposed to be leading discourse that determines the, the path of the nation's uh, uh, future. So this is what is at stake. And right. I guess the people of Tema Central know that now more than ever, we can't afford to mess with it. So I can't even conceive of not being there to speak for Tema Central at this point. Chobwe. Hey. Chobwe. Hey. You've had uh, the... <laughs> yes, MP in waiting. You've had Ebi for yourselves. You know, Judith, just by the way, some people refer to me as the MP, and I said, no, 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 no. If you call me the MP today, they'll start judging my performance, and then they'll mark me low. So you just say that I'm the MP in waiting, so that I don't have to uh, inherit all the failures. And I, eh. <laughs> you say she's your incoming MP. We are going to give you the chance to ask questions now. So if you have questions for Ebi, kindly come to a microphone here. I'm already seeing one gentleman. There's also another microphone uh, to my left. So please come in your numbers. And, and this is an opportunity for us to hear her policies. Because you know, you stay in this constituency, you know the challenges that you face. We've already mentioned a few. Unemployment, sewage. It is time for you to ask your questions and it's time for us to hear what policy she has for you in case she's given the nod. Gentlemen, can you go on your question? Any language you can. Okay. Let us see. Uh, Madam Eddie Bright, the incoming MP for Tema Central. Let me say, Yatuaba, our Tema Central has several times I'm an MP before. Mm. I think a candidate for the baby every four years be almost a candidate. And in this coming election, we are doing say you bet two aba, you bet say and sang, now you are two aba my Eddie Bright. No, no, so aba. Now you best run and say, and the third time you are okay, Yamia now do not have two mana. Mamma on the yet to say, Nanado, so Michel, so Michel, and Bedani, and so she and two years. So, me question, I mean, Busaya, my minister. Me panicho, senyami ye na dumu no ba. Security, ye security service ye o tema central no. E dien no be ya fa hon. 
And I'm a second question, so Mr. Reno accountability. MP before promising a one million dollar per constituency. Eight years in here. Tama Centre was saying eight million dollar. And now eight million dollars. Yes, Renu Sanyamia na dum no by a kwamba no be fast wash you say scanama tema centra for midasi. Thank you very much. And so just for clarity's sake, he is asking about uh, the MPP's promise of $1 million per constituency. He says he's not seen it in this constituency. And so what would Amy, Abby Bright do about this? And he's also asking about issues of security, which he says is deteriorating in this constituency. He's asking what she'll do about that as well. We'd like to take more questions uh, before you answer. And so we could jot that down, $1 million per constituency security. Daddy, Pachokasa. Yeah. Madam, MP, coming. Yes. Say, see, I won't yet MP yet. Whoa, some business, a damn contribution, and now warm my youth now, your water, my central is here. A damn youth now, warm my and open it here. Okay, so he's asking, <laughs> Daddy, but you are not part of the youth. Too. <laughs> but he has an interest, definitely. I'm just fighting for the youth because I know what the youth can do. Great. Thank you. Great. And so Daddy is asking uh, what contribution Abby has for the youth if she's given the nod as a member of parliament for Tema Central constituency. Please, let's take one more question, then we go to my left. Republic Ward Committee 4 said they are currently still working on higher. In fact, now former Ashai or yeah MC, you know, now OCS or the sun lines, no, so since our boy and Bibian Coso, me area care road is it? See where you are, Samania Cora. And here, person, you be sunny, say, say, or ba, and what ban or what they may. Secondly, yeah, President. Uh, Mahama, or Kasa, 24 hour economy. In fact, Yamuni, I am. Yakasa, you say, Alois, a goo, a goo cra, a cold your top. But me, I'm saying, answer number 2015, 2016. All this, you can't say, man, I'm coming here, yeah, maybe. But I'll call you, and you know, I take one. Here, you say, I don't 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 say, She's asking about sewage issues, and of course, we've mentioned that a number of times uh, in my interview with Ebi. Uh, definitely, it's a big issue right here in the Sema Central constituency, and so she's asking what Ebi is going to do about this situation. Let's go to my left, because there are a number of people standing here. We'll take two questions. she would answer, and then we we'll continue. Go ahead. Good morning. Uh, our incoming come MP. Kindly come forward yeah, a bit. My name is Tracy. I have a question for you. Several years of experience and an unsuccessful uh, attempt. <laughs> unsuccessful attempt. What has been your vision for Tema Centra? Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, since that is English, we will not do any translations. Pasha Kasa, we'll take him and then we'll answer before we come to the rest of you. I'm Pacha Michiao. Your friend Michael. Nana Mama, I cast on a camera before a sewage home. A idea Tama has a year bro home, Pana Mama Cassay. Come to ten, you need sewage issue. Menso come to ten, I'm a tea. Mama, who a minimum fee, pa, metaco honum. Now, sir, who free a ten junction, now o qua, Mama, few honum cider. Who do smart hotel? Boys a big got a blue honum, Sagotano. Ten biana a honum a pie. Just last week, now me free fear me baby to coco or other side. Men to man cross because of sewage in a pie, a tacoso. And to some of my cast at Tema, Santrat, sewage issue, no, a yanaches a hard game. And in case you are two a man no or bar, me a house agent, sometimes a copper a dime will be a because of sewage issue, no, to nip on the cast at down with a one pet. And to see a two a mama, not so a bar. A quite ben or befas or about what I see what issue a so ebetra. And only my first question I may be saying about the sewage. How are over to me a bois? Am I a bit to me a total freedom? A far home. 
The next question, and I said, me obi a meta epi abonte. Na e adeba kubi e ha me pan e said, me pia most at times. And I do better to say when we ten, eleven, twelve a.m. Na e my friend ketwa be say, ten years, eleven years, e mani e mema. Na omu nam street so many ma abonte abra omu parent ada. Me a teacher ni me who said you na e ya me ya. O kacha bo friend wodi do at them there was a time. And you may have Michelle Mofra four. They know where Penny a woman, young friend said, Best a thirteen years girl. Now, me catch on, say, by this time, my parents are that one number one tea air then. But I could say, So, did my term. And to order my term, yes, same person, a bono. And I back, so only my catch and say, Ah, guy, now we didn't attend only to a teacher, Niana. And I'm here, the me, and I'm a pano mukofi. And to say, What about us, MP, as I'm a freeway, a car, and I'm a first, you bet me you are more free street in this one. That a teenage pregnancy is yeah, yeah. issue, Hana. And then they to me, but me tell who I'm more than a You better you are free street, so Thank you. Yeah, that's it. And you heard for yourselves, he is also talking about issues of sewage. Um, he's spoken about the fact that it is an issue, as others have already said. And what is she going to do about it? He deals in houses, and because of the sewage issue, sometimes um, people do not buy his houses. And so, uh, I mean, rent out, he's, he's unable to rent out his apartments. He also spoke about the fact that he's a teacher, and he's observed that children are always walking out at night. Children as young as 13 years are walking out at night and engaging in activities that <laughs> I may not want to describe. And so he's asking what she's going to do about it. Uh, we'll take her answers and then, oh, right, we have Mama. Mommy is here, and so let's take her question before um, Abby answers. Mama, patch out to us. We are Mizu. Patch out, Mizu is sweet. It's bright. My patch out, Abby. Abby, bright. Yamin Shrano. Obeshan, Weshan, Weshan. Thousand percent. A Juma Oshani Trum, now Juno Panya Mizaman, a Wadon Shano, no Oba, on Boy Juma on Yer Juma Mamma for whom that yes. Abby, we are Mizu. Thank you very much, Mama. Uh, uh, basically, Mammy was just showering blessings on Abby and praying that she indeed wins power uh, in the upcoming. Uh, elections 2024, December 7. Ebi, you had the questions. Uh, yeah. do, do, would you like me to go through a, a bit of them? Yeah, I would let you go through, but I just want okay. to say when you ask what's kept you going, mm. when you have mummies like this mm. praying for you, and if you notice, she wasn't asking only that God puts power in my hands, but it was conditional. She was giving further prayers that I would be able to deliver on my promises and my ideas for Tema Central. So that's very instructive <laughs> to me. Thank you. Great. So wh where would you like us okay, to start um, from? So the first question was on the $1 million per <laughs> constituency as well as security issues. What do you have to say to that? Well, uh, that's one. Uh, I never believed that it was going to see the light of day anyway. So I'm not disappointed. Mm. And say <laughs> Na me nya sure say obi a Ghana ha nya na obi e hu sa 1 million no na no crane me dey me ba eh me nkodi echi eh em say ene by the end of 8 years no em say me nua be ma ni noy hanse noti and i was say mo bisa ne say ni die na e ba ye any mc any assembly for no e bia na e ba ye and omo a mo hu dey omo dey ye ye me dey me nim na me dey me start 2025 Sad time need the minimum of eight million dollars. Who she into me? I'm a slow accountability need the ever start 2025 January. But government said they provided it. Uh, did they say? I mean, I, I don't know. Nobody has admitted or acknowledged receipts to the best of my knowledge. Yeah, the ANT free assembly say, yeah, the ABBA and until I miss you, yeah, baby, sir, minia, bema. And so not where the TV three for Anka Sane Waha. In say be on Bab Wai and now Omako Yan interview. Omu Bisana Yen Yinam, including me and Kasan Sumi so Metsi na yeah. <laughs> But he, he talked about security issues in the yeah. uh, in the constituency. What, what do you determine to do about that? Let me use this opportunity to acknowledge the efforts of the police. 
To be honest, Tema Central has been one of the best administered areas as far as I mean, even this Tema region is concerned. If and I want have to thank them. A bit of silence uh, as she addresses the issue. Hey, hey, <laughs> Come here. So, you know, the police have done a good job. But you see, we need to make strategic investments in supporting them. Not only on the national level, but even as, um, you know, a constituency. Uh, because in terms of their patrols and other, you know, needs. So this is one thing. We also have the neighborhood watch, which uh, we've piloted in a few, um, in a few uh, communities. And they're doing very well. And this is something that is um, supervised by the police and managed by the police. And is it's this a, your... No, I, it's an initiative I support. It's not my initiative. Right. And I'm proud about that. Because not all the solutions necessarily have to come from, come from my mind. But if you find worthy initiatives, your job is to support them. And so then uh, between the police, that's the security agencies, and the neighborhood watch, we have a good um, structure in place. What we need is the political and administrative backing for them to be able to do these things. And so that's one of the things that I've committed to. It's, one of, it's actually on my plans. It's one of, specifically one of my, my plans for a, the constituency. But aside those two, um, do you have Wait, any uh, extra yes, policies in yes, regards yes. to security? Yes. In terms of, I mean, apart from you know, awareness and programs and all of that, um, I mean, on safety, because it's usually not a one-way street. It's not only about criminals and who wants to snatch your bag. It's also mm. about self-awareness you know, and precautions. But we also have a lighting project that has been ongoing since 2015, where under which we've put in over 500 street lights in Tema Central and serviced several others. Right. So it's a program that we're hoping to have the capacity to expand and continue. So there is that. Um, it also works more effectively uh, with the collaboration of um, assembly men and women and unit committee members because they are the ones who are able to identify the areas within their communities or electoral areas which require more interventions. Of course, we also rely a lot on information from our constituents to, say, to figure out what their most vulnerable spots are. So it's about lighting, it's about um, support for the agencies, and it's about the community watch system. But beyond that, I want to say that for us in Tema Central, the big opportunity for us is the industrialization you know, accelerated industrialization under the 24-hour economy. Because this will come with, you know, social infrastructure that must ensure security. Otherwise, you can't work. You can't operate such a system. If you're working overnight, it means that the social security infrastructure has to be upped immediately. So this is what I'm looking forward to being able... Yo, Midasi. So I'm looking forward to being able to institute this. And so that's one of the reasons why we're looking forward to His Excellency John Dramani Mahama's 24-hour economy policy. Right. Um, let's talk about your contribution for the youth because that's one of the biggest questions that has yes. been asked. So in terms of uh, you know, youth unemployment, there are two issues. Yeah? Number one is employability. And then number two is employment opportunities. So if you know the structure of Tema like we've discussed, yeah. this is basically the industrial township. But if we do not provide guidance for young people along the educational path, then we have people who are probably qualified for other fields that are not necessarily readily employable within the constituency. So yes, we want to employ within the constituency, but we need to improve the relationship that gives us information about what is required in the industrial area, and then we can apply that to guide our youth in terms of uh, skill acquisition. That's number one. But number two, we can't employ everybody in the industrial area we will be an increasingly failing you know, community if we do that because our youth population is growing beyond the boundaries of Tema. So we want to invest in educating youth so that we can export our expertise. So we have the One Million Coders project and uh, I would be proactive in helping them to access these. But we also want to look at other career paths. And so a strong mentorship um, and educational platform. We have the TC Educare 
which looks at encouraging young people along career paths and tailoring their education to meet demands on the job market, not only within Tema Central, but even outside of the constituency. Uh, we look at an opportunity to revive industries. Mm. Auntie talked about Aluworks and all of those which are dead. Yes, you know, we would revive those. And so that's why, like I keep saying, the 24-hour economy is all about Tema. But we must be ready for Tema Central to benefit from the job opportunities. You revive the, the, the companies and then they are recruiting from outside the constituency. That's a loss for us. And I'm not ashamed to say that under normal circumstances, we should benefit more from the revival of these industries so, than so, not. So you're saying however, that? Yeah, however, this is only possible if your voice leads the charge to get them revived in the first place. If we take up our responsibility in terms of representation, because you know what has happened. The representation for Temasa, when I say representation, MP. The MP talks to us as if it is only residents. You also represent the industries in Tema Central. So you need an MP that is not only for residents, but also for the industries. Because ordinarily, we were fed from the industries. The industries came before the settlements. So when you invest the, 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 you know, the whole equation, that's why we have a problem. So we have to lead the charge in parliament, in the corridors of power, wherever policies are made and implemented for the revival of industry in Tema. And that now gives us a seat at the table to be able to place, mm. you know, our quota before everyone else's. Yes. So these are the three angles that we want to, uh, to address this. Reviving the industries, equipping our people to be able to take up the jobs in the industries. And then number three, en uh, 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 empowering our youth to outsource their expertise. So, so basically you're saying that, of course, this is an industrial hub. Yeah. There are job opportunities. But the constituents, some constituents might not be, I mean, equipped enough yes. to take up these job opportunities. Or we are equipped differently. Mm. So like His Excellency John Mahama said, everybody is studying uh, business administration. Uh, what, 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 what? What about the technical jobs? Yes. You understand what I'm saying? And that's where the money is. Most of the people employed in Tema are from outside this constituency, even outside the country. Meanwhile, we have the capacity to support our youth to be the experts here. And that is our heritage. It's our inheritance from Tema. Your grandparents can come and be the pioneers of this industrial city. And you stay here jobless. Well, where's, where's the problem? We can, make the argument, we can make the argument that government says it is providing jobs for, and training, I mean, education and training for TVET. Yes. We, we have their headquarters somewhere in Accra. Is that not working here? I'd, I'd like to go into that. When you talk of TVET education, TEMA is supposed to be leading. We even have TEMA Tech and um, the Vocational uh, Institute at Joint Church, which is just about mm. 400 meters away from us. But if there's no concerted policy that gives value to TVET education, it's all useless. If we give lip service to TVET education without looking at the whole loop that assures employment or that there's even somewhere to employ in the first place, what's the whole idea? When a government says TVET education and all your industries are failing, when a government says TVET education and your whole industrial area is dead, does, I mean, does that show any real commitment to TVET education? Then what is the value of TVET education? We are coming from a tradition in Tema here where VACO workers, even the junior workers, mm. used to be the most comfortable workers in Ghana. Even if you are just a cleaner, your children have, even your children have access to decent leisure, you know, and the pride of in, in, in their parents' work. And Tisa, you understand what I'm saying? Tisa. What do you this intend is, to do about this? Yes, so that's what your industries, some of them are collapsing. Yes. They're not being revived. TVET, uh, they say there's TVET education. That's what the yeah. government says. Yes. But you said that the policies are not benefiting the people. It's not what do you useful. intend to do if you're given the nod? Yes, so two things, which is back to what I said. TVET education, you know, we incidentally have the light industrial area. Um, His Excellency John Mahama has promised to transform it into 
you know, um, uh, a hub, an artisanal hub. Because this is where we had the foundries, the repairers, the fabricators. And so if we can make it an ultra-modern, you know, settle a hub again, then it, it lends, you know, value to that TVET education. Modernize and, you know, basically make the place worth the education. Under the National Apprenticeship Program, we're going to um, give accreditation to the master craftsmen and give them incentives to train our youth. But the youth also need incentives to go into this line of, of, of training. So number one, we're, apart from it being free, the education, we're also going to give allowances to make the cost of you know, accessing the education bearable. That's number two. But number three, we're also going to guide their choices of vocation to be able to assure them ready jobs. You see, we need to tie in the training to the jobs. We need to tie in the jobs to the training. So it's two way. When you're being trained, you're being trained in areas that are specific and can assure you employment. And also, as we revive the companies, we remember to take into consideration the kind of human resource and the skill sets that they need to be able to thrive. So these are, these are the issues. But beyond that also, you want to expand the scope. Because if we're running on uh, the basic, uh, let me say, schedule that we're running, there's not enough production, there's not enough activity to absorb the numbers of workers that we must accommodate. So that's why there are ins added incentives to move us into an export-oriented economy, mm. which means that the, the, in, you know, the industries here are producing three times what they would. But of course, that also ties into demand. And it means that we're doing our work beyond the constituency, beyond the nation, to source for off-takers for our, our produced goods. So it's a whole ecosystem that has been described under the 24-hour economy. But like I say, Tema is at the epicenter of this because we are the first, we are the premier uh, industrial city. So this is um, what I will say, it's a time of hope. You see that when you ask me questions, I don't like to spend a lot of time talking about our challenges. Because we're at a point where we, in a few weeks, would be looking at how to implement things like this. So when our people are complaining that the TVET education, Nkoye, I'm not talking about that. We already know Nkoye. I'm talking about what our alternative is. And uh, for Tema, the future is really bright. Mm -hmm. Indeed, the future is really bright. Uh, we have a few, um, I mean, you, you, you brought a few policies uh, that yes, you'd want to look at. They're going to be shown, or projects, they're going to yeah. be shown on the screen right now. And then you can elaborate that. But before that is shown on the screen, okay, we can see that right there. If you can explain really what that is about. Oh, okay. So basically, we have a situation where, like I told you, the social infrastructure in Tema Central was such that... You know, apart from you being assured jobs, you were assured accommodation. And within those settlements, we had um, recreational areas. Mm. So this is where our children would play. Me too, I played small ampe and all of that mm. there. This is where, you know, older people could sit down and relax. You know, essentially community centers, you know, within, you know, each enclave. And so this is where on a project to reclaim spaces like that right. and the young people are taking initiatives already we we'll sit down in spaces like this watch uh, uh, football mm. uh, play basketball you know children play ludo we play draft and a lot of things and so this is just one uh, gesture to encourage them mm. you know things like this we support initiatives like that you remember right. the lady talked about uh, the youth degenerates you have our young people as young as, or even the gentleman talked about uh, young people as young as 13, 13, 10, 11, because you know, the spaces that used to be for the families, at least even if you were in your house, where your kid was playing was so close that it was just, you know, you could actually overlook it. You know, right now those spaces have all been taken up by uh, yeah, it's not even only extensive, they've been sold off, but even those that haven't been sold are in such bad condition that they can't accommodate us. There's nothing for our leisure and pleasure there. So when you reclaim these spaces, give them a little spruce up, put maybe a screen or so, you can show all kinds of programs that engage the youth. Mm -hmm. But we also have TC Showcase. 
which is an exposition platform that allows young people to express their talents and all of that. I don't know if you know that Tema is a hotbed of talents and creative talents. We've mm. produced some of the best musicians in this country. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of them still current. You know, if you talk about Sarkodier and all of that, we're all products of this environment. Mm -hmm. Nana Finn, today we have MOG, John Winner. I mean, the <laughs> gospel scene is really strong from Tema. So all of these things need space to thrive. Yeah. And uh, we're looking forward to encouraging this. But beyond that, we also have homework centers. So homework centers are small centers that we're developing within the communities again. And these centers offer um, remote services, not only uh, in situ, but virtual, to help people with their educational needs and you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, give them access to internet and you know, help them you know, pursue research and all of that. And these are supervised centers. So we're trying to look for avenues to engage our youth. I can tell you that you were asking if we had a teenage pregnancy, not very high around here. But what right. we have is, um, I think, an increasing threat of uh, chronic drug addiction mm. and, you know, a few things that uh, we, we can't sit here and, you know, condemn. But we need to provide services around, you know, the constituency that make social life more interesting, more varied, and that will offer some serious distraction, you know, from things like this. Because right. right now, where we stand, the social infrastructure is not able to support uh, you know, any leisure. So of course, we'll find, the devil will find work for our hands. So yes, Remo, ye hiyamwa watema central. Mon revive ye community mayeng. Where the Ekoma, His Excellency John Mahama, upe ena uwo adrim papa ema tema central. Inti ye chen u papa, ye chen we We have just four minutes to wrap up oh, for our life. Really? And so, uh, just, just for you to address one of the main issues that was asked, yeah. sewage. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? So interestingly, if you um, remember, the lady made reference to the fact that under the MC during our government, uh, mm. the sewage uh, work has started. This was a World Bank project. And this is why it's important to have proactive and sensitive representation. If you're... MP and your MC are not concerned about the issue or are clueless about the issue, it won't be a priority. We started this project. Uh, I think the head of it is at Community 3, where we put the main infrastructure that all the sewer lines were supposed to feed into. We started changing the pipes, the sewage lines, because look, it's not a problem beyond the fact that we've aged above the infrastructure or the infrastructure has aged away from the current population. Mm. So this was started under our government. It's still a pending project. Eight years of the MPP, they've refused to touch it. I don't know why, but I did, I did not hear the MPs over the last eight years um, advocate for, if I, over the past 12 years, advocate for the sewage situation. So this is my number one priority mm. because it might not affect some people. Um, Bankase come to me see or no ni fee and a sewage problem anyhow. Me dear any nam me fee nim no cre smart uh gata no a pipe ube who say a da honso. But for us and the nam ye fee mu and see for me a ye personal issue. Me mammy or see on two free come to seven. And see young share and can one sem my his excellency John Dramani Mahama. The leadership, no, and some saw sa projects, no, bioma. And the me mami, sana we toilets. In fact, we the sewage toilets. A bendy nam ye daimu sa. And to me, a be bright there. A who hear me? Me name say a ya sembia a su chain. Me anka sa mi bottom. And to ye chain say a ba papa a be ba. No mwa she sa di na matema sa. Be bright. Finally, we have just a minute. Uh, pledge to your people that whatever you have policies you have brought about that yeah. you say you are going to do if you're given the nod you will indeed do them yes. that's your final pledge today. yes so the first set of plans i have are the right accountability plans i am set to say na bra e ka no e adie na aba o e ma ye ye nim me dia me ba sika bia aban e di be bra ye bia the central for me publish because me person be ka say me na me di musika obi bia ra obi contract Ewa tema central dimu biano 
ye be publishing ma mwen hun se si me si e no ye kwan we we ni we e na ye ni assembly kan ye we ni we ne ye ye apart from that so me first 6 months as mp ye be nya tema central tv and radio e ho na ye be kan ye nsem ni na nti e ja o e ye be bright na wo pese wo kan na sem kra wo de koso na koka o na koka and see when you know we will have uh, TV uh, TVs now mm. medieval ball recreational centers. No, it is not only for NEG. It is also so that even when I'm not in the constituency physically, no, you bet to me are your virtual meetings. Now you nya your meetings together. And see TC showcase no so ba TC connect no so ba. Oma amuti e yo abanti ni amu nim adekro. And so yet I'm a central for the yeah nim TC educate. Your name TC Healthcare, your name TC Showcase, your name TC Connect. Nina Eba, Ewa Yesu Demo, and I'm Moti. And yes, you heard her, that is Abby Bright. Yes. She's contesting for the parliamentary seat right here in the Tema Central constituency. She's pro promising transparency and she's promising to make sure that her policies will work in the Tema Central constituency. My name is Judith Brown. Thank you all for being here today. And that is how we wrap up at Women's Manifesto right here in the Tema Central constituency. But just so you know, Women's Manifesto is sponsored, uh, supported by the Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office. Thank you so much for joining us. Solo no, afine solo no, solo no ne ho, afine solo no ne ho, ho si ana, solo no ne ho, eh cha, yadamuni nasi, yadamuni nasi.